All right, Steven Spielberg, I see you. You at it again. Let's go ahead and get into this review. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Ready Player One, and I want to let you all know that I really do appreciate it. So when it comes to Ready Player One, I just want to let you know if you didn't know already that this was one of my most anticipated films of 2018. As soon as I saw the trailer for this last year, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot freaking wait to see this. This seems right up my alley. Not only was I excited because it's being directed by Steven Spielberg, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Like I said, it's right up my alley. This thing looks like it has action, adventure, fantasy, science fiction, Easter eggs, all that good stuff. So I was really on board with this. And if you didn't know, now you will know that Ready Player One is based on a novel of the same name that came out in two 2011 very popular book i did not read it the author of that uh, book was eric klein who is also the co-writer of this film alongside zach penn zach penn is known for writing a large number of comic book films that have uh, graced the theaters in recent years and i really do respect him as a writer as well and just another cool thing ready player one is a phrase from the days of the classical video games i just thought that was cool when i was just looking up stuff and i do uh, remember that myself from classic old video games and what the story is about is it's in 20, 2045, Columbus, Ohio. We have Wade Wilson, or I'm sorry, Wade, is it Wade Wilson? Or not Wade Watts, excuse me, played by Ty, Ty Sheridan, who was Cyclops in the X-Men Fox movies. Um, he's obsessed with the Oasis as long as everybody else in the world. And what the Oasis is, is like basically the best virtual reality experience that you've ever encountered. You can go in and do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want without too many, uh, you know, repercussions or anything like that. And so the creator of this Oasis, a character by the name of James Holiday, played by Mark Rylance, who was another great actor. He's the creator. He created these Easter eggs and these puzzles and these maps and clues and all these things that you have to follow. And if you can beat the game, if you can beat the Oasis, if you can find all these clues and things like that, not only do you get complete control of the Oasis and everything that it contains, but you also get half a trillion dollars or $500 billion. So you can imagine that people are going to be subscribing, signing up, doing all that good stuff, trying to get, a, you know, some of that cheddar, trying to get that control over like the world's greatest resource. And not only are good, innocent, fun loving people are going to be after that, but a lot of evil people, corporate giants are going to be going after it as well. And it's just a race to the finish because I mean, some people think this is a game. People, some people are cheating like, no, this is like real life. And so, you know, your life may be at stake. And so that's just the, uh, the gist of the film, the plot of the film. But let's go ahead and get into some of the things that I liked. As soon as this film started, I was smiling ear to ear. As soon as I heard the first ring, the first melody, the first little ting of music, I was smiling ear to ear. I was on board looking at all the opening credits. Um, it was just a beautiful soundtrack, a beautiful score that just really got me on board. Now, the score in this movie was done by uh, Al, excuse me, Alan Silvestri. Uh, now, Steven Spielberg usually works with John Williams, but this is the, either the third or the fourth film that they were not able to work together on. Um, the reason why is John Williams was busy working with Spielberg for the post that came out last year. And so that's just one of the reasons why he wasn't able to, um, you know, compose this film. But Alan Silvestri, another popular composer, came through and uh, he did hold down the reins. So first thing I noticed and first thing I like was the score. Uh, this is, I don't know if I'll buy, but it is something that I would say I would not mind listening to again, listening to again or, uh, jamming in my car. The next thing that I really did like about this movie was the world building and the oasis itself. And when you go, actually, before I talk about the world building and the oasis, something I noticed before that was just like, I, I, I'm a fan of long shots. The opening scene wasn't done in one take, but when we see Wade in his world narrating to the audience of, you know, what the stacks are, what the Oasis is and things like that, there are a lot of long shots just showing Columbus, Ohio. And, you know, it's a looks a lot different than it is today. Just with these stacks, just 
It looks like an organized junkyard, you know, times two or something like that with just complexes and stacks, you know, just stacked on top of each other. Hence the name, the stacks. But that sequence right there, I really like. They played a, a pay a lot of attention to detail. So I got to give you credit there, Steven Spielberg. But I just thought this was beautiful. And I was like, man, these are long, beautiful shots. And they seem like they were really difficult to take. So just kudos there. But like I was just saying, the world building in the Oasis itself. When we finally got into the Oasis, is just seeing what it was and hearing Ty Sheridan's character Wade explain everything to us I was like you know a little kid at Christmas just like you know wow like I was smiling like I was reacting to the latest Avengers trailer or something like that it just looked beautiful in the real world that I'm living in right now as I'm recording this video virtual reality is on the rise right now but it does not pique my interest at all I just you know when I see the commercials on TV with certain retailers um, you know, advertising their virtual reality, virtual reality. Hey, put on the goggles or the headset or whatever. You can do this. You can do that. It just never appeased to me. It just really just, you know, in one ear, out the other, out of sight, out of mind. But after seeing this movie, I kind of want to go into like one of these retail stores. And I, I keep saying retail stores, so I don't want to say their name. You know, it's like, hey, you know, where's your virtual reality stuff? You know, I kind of want to try it out. But, you know, that's just what the movie did to me. It turned something that I completely didn't care about at all to something that I'm actually actually interested in to where on a Saturday, if I'm just kind of killing time, I may go and check it out. Um, the next thing that I really did like is this is the action adventure. Like I said, I'm, at the very beginning of this video, people are racing to get to this Easter egg. And so, you know, there's a lot of races and hunts and things like that. There is this race at the beginning of the movie to where everybody is just going gung ho. And we did get an Easter egg right there with uh, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And there's just so like so many like um I'm, I could talk for 30 minutes straight just on all the Easter eggs because we got Iron Giant, Tron, Akira, Lord of the Rings, Black to the Future. Uh, um, I said Iron Giant. We got Chucky in this thing. The punk ass uh, Freddy Krueger. He was in here too. And I call him a punk ass because he scared the crap out of me uh, when I was a little kid. But we you know we have all that in here too. But this race that I was just talking about again, it's crazy. Just jumping and swinging all around. I mean, any obstacle that you can possibly imagine is thrown into this race and it's just impossible. But I was eating it all up. I was just like, man, this is freaking amazing. I'm loving this. This is so detailed. I can't believe Steven Spielberg was able to do this. And when I say can't believe he's able to do this because he even him said that himself that this is the third hardest film that he's ever directed in his whole filmography, his whole film film career uh right behind jaws which came out i think in 78 correct me if i'm wrong in the comments and also seven private ryan that came out in 1998 and so you know i can kind of see when you're looking at all these details and stuff but the next thing that i really did like about all that uh, uh on top of that is the avatars themselves because that's where we get to know uh wade watts a lot more ty sheridan's character a lot more is his avatar we get to know him more as an avatar in the oasis than his actually real self in the real world and that could be really uh tricky and a, a big risk because with a movie filled with so much cgi if you're going to have blatant cgi characters it just has to work and you know it you're you're risking us the audience possibly clocking out because it's like what's this a computer animated character kind of next door to a real world you know i'm just not being able to relate you know i'm i'm being sucked out of the illusion but that's just not the case you got a lot of humanity from Wade's character there and you you got to see I mean everybody you know kind of imagines themselves and something else I mean every for the most part people love themselves but at the same time you know we imagine us to you know be something else and so it was really cool just to kind of see how the characters were in the Oasis and kind of how their real selves were in the real world you know but uh, I was I was just watching it's so like man we are getting a lot of these avatars and he's like, I'm not missing the real life people so that just kind of goes to show that the writing was great that the dialogue the writing dialogue same thing that the acting and all that was great now let me get over to the dislikes and this may uh disappoint a lot of you um because uh, a lot of people were raving about this film i haven't watched any other reviews the only thing i've watched was to see what the rating was on rotten tomatoes and i, I saw that after i viewed the film uh, but I, I haven't looked at anything else, but people were just saying, hey, Brandon, I can't wait for you to see this. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Da, 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 da. Well, the first thing that I did not like about this movie was <laughs> Wade Watts himself, not in the Oasis. I liked his avatar, but in the real world, the reason why it's not. Well, you know, I know I did not like him one because there was just nothing to his character 
other than him narrating to us the whole time. I necessarily did not attach myself to his character or could possibly relate to him at all. But I don't like his character either because he is a uh, hopeless romantic. Not necessarily anything wrong with that, but just to a degree, in my opinion, that's just completely unrealistic. This character, Wade, in this movie is falling in love with people after five minutes. You don't know them. You don't know anything about them. It just makes no sense to me. I don't understand how somebody can fall in love with somebody that you never even met, that you don't know them, but you know of them. And... That just seemed kind of really elementary to me. And because of his idiotic love, uh, love affair, well, not love affair, but his uh, somewhat infatuation, it kind of threw a dent in the plot to me uh, for me and just, you know, kind of muddied, muddied up the water just a little bit because of him and, uh, you know, him and his puppy love, you know, his objective to win the Oasis was, uh, you know, kind of tainted a little bit. And, you know, when the high stakes and things like that are on the line, you know, we got to take things seriously. Keyword, I just said high stakes and I will get back to that. Another thing that I did not like about this movie was the villain himself in this movie was extremely weak to me. Um, he is a corporate giant. And what is his name again? I, I you know, I well, I don't think I was going to talk about him too much, but the villain in this movie, um, you know, it was just kind of like a cardboard villain to me, other than just him being a corporate giant and him just wanting to take over the world and be in control of everything. There was just nothing else to him that really, um, you know, got me on board. Not that I'm always just trying to sympathize, empathize with villains and antagonists, but, you know, he was just kind of boring to me. He was boring in the real world. He was boring in the uh, in the Oasis too. his avatar, which is kind of the same character. Uh, as, as the real world, but, you know, just kind of had muscles with, you know, sparkly eyes. And that's just something that, you know, I just was just wasn't really feeling. Now, something real quick that I did like Simon Pegg was in this movie. I did like him a lot. And uh, I think the person that I'm talking about that I didn't like the villain, his name is Ben uh, Mendelssohn, uh, S-O-H-N. I don't know if I'm pr- um pronouncing that correctly but i like the actor because he was in the dark knight rises and a few other stuff his name in the film is sorrento but in this film he just wasn't you know he just wasn't doing it to me um also in this movie like all the action was great but there was not enough of it i wanted more you know i'm just saying you have all these characters with all these abilities i mean you have every freaking single made up character fictional science fiction fantasy whatever in this movie so you have there's just a tons of abilities and powers and these things that you know easter eggs can do and things like that and i just wanted a little bit more of that when we did get it on screen i was eating it all up i was loving it but like i said i just wanted a little bit more and like while i was not able to attach myself to wade i was as avatar towards the end of the film i wasn't able to attach myself to the avatar um that wade was using either because you know he tried to uh, rally the troops and just like hey everybody out there fighting for you know we we're gonna do this and we're gonna come together and we're gonna fight and, uh, and stop the bad guys Woo yeah you know i just wasn't like you know he's giving this whole speech and i and usually at times like this in the movie i'm like yeah you know i want to jump in the movie with you enjoying you and like whoa yeah but not in this movie here i mean you know he did that to try to rally the troops at the end and then when everything came down to it the final battle it was just really anticlimactic for me you know i wanted more i wanted more of a pop i wanted more of a bang and i just didn't get that instead of a bang i got like a little poof i don't want a poof i want a bang but you know with me splitting things like that down the middle with things that i liked and disliked you know you possibly all think oh brandon you're going to give this like a five out of ten or something like that no i i wouldn't say that and just a few other uh fun facts that you know were interesting to me um, you know, Christopher Nolan, Robert Zemeckis, Matthew Vaughn, Peter Jackson, and Edgar Wright are all directors in this film. Not, excuse me, they're not directors in this film. They were considered to be directors in this film, but they ended up going with Steven Spielberg. Um, something else that just really didn't, uh, you know, grind my, well, it did grind my gears was Steven Spielberg has directed like over 30 films. Like I said, everybody knows he's one of the most popular, best filmmakers of all time. 
there's a lot of science fiction references and things like that that I heard were brought up in the book, but I did not see that in this movie. Where was E.T. at? You know, they could have had a flying shark jaws. They could have had the um, the aliens from World of Worlds. They could have had Indiana Jones in this. If he was in this uh, and I missed it, my bad. Let me know in the comics. But there wasn't. I don't know why Steven Spielberg decided to remove all of his film references out of the movie. But that just could have been something, a little icing on the cake, a little cherry on top that could have made this movie much better but while i ended this video with things that i did not like guys i really did enjoy this movie a lot i mean i will be buying this on blu-ray i don't know if i'll be buying it on 4k just to save money and that just goes to show how much i did like the film if it was shot with imax cameras which i didn't find in my research i will buy it on 4k but it, this is something that i definitely will be watching on uh you know home video I am very interested in looking at all the behind the scenes, the commentary, uh, featurettes, you know, gag reels, B-rolls, all that good stuff. It was a great film. Um, it did not reach my expectations, but, you know, I'm, I didn't walk away from this film either, uh, disappointed either. If I had to rate Ready Player One out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yes, a 7.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion for Ready Player One. Have you seen it yet? I'm sure you have. And what did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can also look me up on social media because it's right there at the bottom of your screen and also down in the description box below. Below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Ready Player One. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.